Hey everybody, welcome to the Cow Emporium. We're outside in the garden. Guess what time it is? It is time to plant potatoes. Now there's, it's not really rocket science planting potatoes. As long as you put them in some sort of a medium, they seem to grow. We put ours in dirt. I've seen people grow them in straw and they grow just fine. I've never tried growing them in straw. Well, that's not true. Glenn has tried growing them in straw. I don't think that we had a lot of success that year. And that was before we had our own garden. So anyway, I've also tried growing them in containers and that didn't work out for me so well either. Um, I grew a good top and I didn't even have, didn't have any bottoms. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. So I, I prefer to put them into the dirt and uh, I can't say that there's a really a wrong way to grow potatoes, but did you know that there's a right way to grow potatoes? I know, what am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about indeterminate and determinate potatoes. Yeah, I said potatoes, not tomatoes. So like tomatoes, potatoes will be indeterminate where they will grow up and up out of the ground and they'll just, you need to hill them cover them with dirt otherwise uh, they get hit by the sun and then they go green and they, they're not good to eat. Those are indeterminate potatoes and there's there is a list of indeterminate potatoes but for us the ones that we're going to be growing that are indeterminate are these reds. I have two different kinds of reds I think. These are viking Oh, they're both Viking. Okay, never mind. They're both Viking red sea potatoes. Okay. They need to be hilled. Otherwise, your potatoes will be growing up out of the ground because they just keep growing up from the seed that you put into the ground. Now, on the other hand, the determinate potatoes, they start growing just above the seed that you planted into the ground. So, for example, we like the Yukon Golds. They're perfect for us and they're determinate potatoes. So this year we're not going to hill these potatoes because actually hilling is a lot of work for us. Um, and I just, I'm going to try this and see what happens. And if for some reason it doesn't work like I think it will, I'll let you guys know. But so what's going to happen is we're going to put these potatoes in the ground about five or six inches down and then the potatoes grow in one layer just above that seed potato you put into the ground therefore no need for hilling so I want to make sure there's like some soil between the seed and the top of the garden bed so that they don't happen to grow up into the sun but they're not supposed to so here we go this is this year's experiment the right way to grow potatoes okay the sea potato has many eyes on it and it says on the bag and from experience we know that you want to have two to three eyes on your piece of potato so this end has quite a few i'm just going to cut that off right there and see here there's quite a few eyes on that so each potato, each sea potato has quite a few potential hills to it. And if you want to get really fussy, you can cut her down so that they are small pieces. For example, if you look at this one I just cut, it's got eyes here, here, here. So I can cut this up again before I seed it.
Okay, so here goes nothing. Test my theory of determinate potatoes. I have researched it and uh, it's actually a thing. So <laughs> Glenn's digging these holes just a little bit deeper. The other ones were about four inches. These are about five to six inches deeper or deep. And uh, yeah, we're gonna throw them in there. They, uh, they don't have as many eyes on them as the red potatoes I noticed. So we cut them up um, and we're gonna throw them in the hole, cover them up and pray for rain. Well, everybody, the potatoes are planted. We planted 200 foot rows of potatoes, one whole row of red and one whole row of Yukon golds. So we plan on hilling the reds when they come up and not the Yukon golds. The next row is ready for us to plant back there. It's probably gonna be a hundred foot row of onions. Guys, I made those onions on the ropes last year and I have two fresh onions left to use. That's amazing. So I can't wait for fresh onions to be up. I have to plant them first, but that's what's coming up next. And uh, check out this background here. It is so peaceful and serene and the cows are out there. The wind is not blowing for a change. It's just such a beautiful night. I'm gonna head into the greenhouse and I'm gonna transplant stuff. So thanks for watching the potato video. Now the potatoes don't really need much to grow. They just need some water and to heal the reds and that's it. And later on in the season, uh, I didn't do a video on this last year, but you don't, you want to stop watering your potatoes when the tops start to die. And then once they die and uh, they can just get right brown, then you know the skins are firm on your potatoes and they're ready to dig up. So that's what I plan on doing. That won't be till September and it's only May 5th today. So that's a long ways from now. I'm sure it'll go super fast. And I also have this plan to do the 100 days of growing this year again. If y'all want to follow that on the channel, I'm just kind of wondering what to, to call it this year. Last year, I called it 100 days of growing, making and eating our own food. This year, I was wondering, should I call it like 100 days of uh, garden to table, garden to plate, field to plate, farm to plate. So you guys can maybe let me know. Drop it in the comments if you think, you know, one idea what to call my 100 days project is good. Leave it, change it. I don't know. Don't do it at all. That would be kind of sad because you know I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> Have a great day, everybody. Stay safe.